Hey guys, to help around the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. The goal is to be transparent and unbiased. This is not an endorsement. It's a privilege to serve you. Let's get into it. Hey guys, what's going on? I am having a wonderfully memorable time here in the Madison Park area. Actually, kind of like a little boat launch uh, into Lake Washington. We're checking out the Evelo Aries hub drive. So we actually came down a fairly steep hill. We also went up a fairly steep hill as well. So I had a chance to kind of check it out a little bit, but I wanted to stop and tell you guys some of the specifications and kind of the general purpose for the bike. So the basic idea of the bike, of the Aries, as it says right here, this is the hub drive version. So of course the motor is in the rear hub instead of in the middle for the mid drive, but there's also quite a few differences. Uh, this one is more of like the entry into the platform of kind of like the all purpose uh, dual suspension bike. Uh, also some of the components are a little bit of a step down. So instead of the internally geared hub, you do have a more traditional derailleur uh, in the back here, uh, as well as some of the other things. You have some mechanical brakes. So this is a really good bike if you're kind of like getting into uh, electric cycling or getting into cycling at all again, kind of like testing the waters. So this is a, a good platform to go on. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into the mechanical specs and then we'll talk electrical and then we'll do the ride, my favorite part. All right, so coming up to the front of the bike, that's a good place to start. Up at the tippy front, you have a really big tire. So this is a 26 by three. So that means it's a three inch wide diameter uh, across, or not diameter, sorry, width across the tire there. Not a whole lot of tread on this for like knobby, you know, off-road sort of riding, but it's super comfortable. So you get actually a fair amount of cushion out of this. You know, you don't want to measure it too much by saying it's suspension, but it more or less serves the same purpose of making it really comfortable to ride. Uh, this tire also has a Kevlar strip on the inside, uh, which is really nice to prevent flats from happening. I have a traditional Schrader valve there if you want to fill it up at a gas station or so. Um, another cool point about the tire is that it fits onto this custom rim. So this rim is actually 45 millimeters wide uh, on there, which is pretty nice because you don't have to stretch, or sorry, like pinch in the bead of the tire. So instead the tire can actually mount like so, instead of having to like pinch into a really tiny uh, wheel in there. And so as a result, you get a really good shape and you get a really good stability out of a tire like this. And it really does work, you know, with, with this setup here, with the dual suspension, it's really comfortable. We were coming down some older roads that were leading into the water here. And it was really nice to kind of come down because I didn't have to worry so much about keeping so much control on the bicycle because this was able to absorb some of that instability in the road, uh, which is nice. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. You can tell I'm excited to talk about the suspension system. Um, so up in the front, you have a 13 gauge spoke. In the back, you actually have a 12 gauge spoke because of the rear motor um, coming into a 100 millimeter hub spacing, pretty standard there. You do have a through axle coming through um, the front as well as a 160 millimeter rotor for the disc brake. On this bike, you have a mechanical uh, disc brake. Uh, personally, I like to work on mechanical disc brakes because they're a lot easier than the uh, hydraulic. Hydraulic are nice because once you get them set, they're good for a long time. But I do like the idea that I can fix the mechanical myself. So that's my personal preference for those. Um, as far as stopping power, the hydraulics definitely have a little more bite to them. Um, but when you get the mechanical ones set up, they feel pretty darn good as well. Uh, so this actually is the uh, a similar um, fork up to the other bike, the uh, Aries Mid-Drive. Uh, this one also has a 100 millimeter travel uh, for the stanchions, uh, as well as the mount for the light, which is the same. Um, and this is a spring um, suspension. Uh, it does have a lockout as well as a preload adjust if you want to change the controls there to kind of adjust it for your weight. Uh, so we do have a mount for the light. We'll kind of talk about that with the electric system. Uh, coming up to the controls, um, so one of my favorite things about this bike is kind of the mixture of kind of like an off, what appears to be an off-road bike that is tuned for more comfort. I talked about that with the tires, but also the handlebars and the controls have a large part to do with that as well. Um, so you'll see from the handlebars that they swoop back or sweep back rather. So instead of a straight stick, like a broomstick that you're holding onto, they kind of come back to meet you so that you have a little bit more control and you don't have to throw your weight into it. So that's a big part of the comfort um, of controlling the bike in general. 
alongside with the other comfort features uh, up on the controls, the grips are pretty good because they have kind of like an ergonomic flare. It's not like super big, you know, it's not intrusive, I wouldn't say, but it's enough to kind of put more of the surface area of your palm onto it so that you can kind of splay out the stress on there so that smaller, but especially longer rides don't kind of fatigue you so much uh, for keeping your hands in one position or putting too much weight up on the front. So that's a pretty cool uh, feature there for comfort. Uh, but one thing that was kind of interesting to me is actually this stem, which I hadn't seen before. Uh, so John, by the way, uh, John is here from eVelo. Tell me a little bit more about this stem. Sure, so the stem is actually designed to position a rider uh, as they would ride on an adjustable stem that's adjusted all the way up. Uh, something we've run into is that customers like the idea of the adjustable stem, but in reality, they end up putting it in the most upward position. Uh, that's not all good though, because the adjustable stem adds some weight and adds some complexity. Uh, so we had this custom stem design, the Evelo Stargazer, offers a little more rise uh, than even an adjustable stem in the most upward position, quite a bit more rise than a standard stem, uh, but it's lighter, more solid, more robust setup. So overall, uh, gets customers in the upright position that they want to ride. Yeah, and that's actually a pretty cool thing about Evelo in general is that it's not a, you know, a mystery company that's kind of making bikes out of nowhere. They actually have a lot to do with the local customers here that are providing input, as well as the background that they've had in the industry for many years, um, getting different parts and feedback to kind of customize the bike for the American market. So that's actually a pretty cool thing about the company to kind of give you a little bit of a background. Um, so again, talking about the comfort aspect of it, the controls also kind of fit into um, fit into the grip on this case. With, this goes back into the rear set of gears. This is a Shimano uh, Revo shift uh, grip shifter right here uh, for the seven speed derailleur that's in the back. We'll kind of cover that in a second, but it blends in pretty well. You know, the grip is actually cut just a little bit on the right hand side to accommodate that. And you have a lot of real estate up here if you wanted to mount like maybe a cell phone or a water bottle or something like that uh, up on the handle bars. This is a pretty big lever for the brakes with a little bit of a rubber texture here. It does have motor inhibitors, uh, meaning that when you squeeze on the brakes, it'll send an electric signal down to the motor to stop power. So you're never fighting against that at the same time. And also while we're up here, I should mention the waterproof connectors uh, that are up front. So this is actually a pretty cool thing for serviceability in which all of your electrical controls up at the front, including the brakes that I just mentioned, the display, the throttle, and the remote, uh, they come down to these quick disconnects right here. So if there is something that comes up and you need a replacement part, it's totally user serviceable with like a Phillips screwdriver and a pair of hands, you're set to go. And one really cool thing that I have never seen before until now is that they also extended that same thing to the light. Uh, so the light actually is unfortunately a somewhat common failure point, especially when folks travel with their electric bikes, because this is just out there kind of exposed, so to speak, when you toss the bike in the back of a, a truck or something like that. And a lot of times I see these lights that are just barely hardwired in, and then that wire goes all the way down into the controller. In this case, Evelo's put a quick disconnect. So yeah, with two hands, you can totally get that apart and boom, there is your quick disconnect. And with that, you can get a replacement part sent if you need one. And with, again, with a Phillips, you're ready to go. Uh, that's a really cool thing because the bike, like the company, is made to last. It's not like a bike that just gets tossed out, you know, hopefully you like it the way it is. And if it breaks, you know, that's too bad. They actually put a lot of effort into making the, the bike um, last a long time, both in small things like that, as well as longer things. We'll talk about that a little bit when we get to the electric system with the Samsung battery, by the way. Um, so continuing on with the mechanical system, so we count 48 teeth up on the front chain ring. That's uh, you know, not too much of a size on there, but it's coming back into the seven speed gears here. Uh, you have 11 to 28 teeth uh, on the rear cassette. That's being controlled by the Shimano Tourney uh, derailleur, which actually uh, John and I were out to lunch earlier today talking about how impressed we were with the Shimano Tourney and how far it's come uh, in recent years. Uh, so uh, one thing I should mention about the frame is that in the rear triangle, it's pretty darn small here. A lot of times you see it coming from the bottom bracket all the way across. Uh, in this case, they've actually kind of opened it up. And the reason for that is for accessibility, but also a little bit for the des other design aspects. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Well, sure, it's a single pivot design, so it uses a little bit less metal. So it's a little bit lighter and also a little bit stiffer the way it's positioned. And as you mentioned, particularly with a hub drive bike, getting the wheel in and out, it's a heavier wheel than a conventional wheel. So having the elevated chain stake just gives it a clearer path to remove the wheel. 
That's awesome. So that's, yeah, that's one thing I'll talk about in a second is the electrics, but yeah, that's absolutely it. That getting a hub drive in and out, it's heavy. I mean, there's no way around it. There's a disconnect for the motor. And of course it has a regular set of, of nuts keeping it on, which isn't too surprising, but nonetheless, this is a big, heavy guy. And it's, as John was mentioning, it's not easy to get in and out in for a lot of folks. And so having that ease of access, not having so much of the frame um, back here to kind of get in the way definitely helps out a lot. Um, so in the back set, you also have a 160 millimeter rotor with the Tektro Aries in the back. I did mention that these spokes are a little bit stronger. That's really the big difference between the front and the back as far as tires, brakes, and wheel, is that these spokes are stronger to accommodate the extra torque that's coming from the motor. Um, the kickstand is actually mounted in the back, which is pretty cool. That's something I didn't get to mention on the mid-drive Aries, even though it totally applies, is that the kickstand is mounted way in the back of the bike, which is a really nice feature, especially when you're pushing the bike around in the garage. You, when you push the bike backwards, the pedals move backwards as well, um, along with the hub. And if you have a kickstand that's mounted in the center, like a lot of bikes, um, then the crank can actually come into contact with that and prevent the bike from being pushed backwards. It's not a big deal. I mean, everybody that's ever worked in a bike shop knows how to fix it. You just lift up the bike and pedal it forward a little bit to get it out of the way. However, um, if for some reason you don't work at a bike shop, <laughs> then it's really nice because you can just push the bike forward, backward without a hassle and not get it locked into position, uh, which is pretty cool because it can be kind of alarming. You know, you're pushing it around and all of a sudden the bike kind of fights back a little bit. But in this case, that is totally um, obliterated by having the kickstand in the back. So let's talk a little bit about the rear suspension here. Uh, so this is uh, the dampener for the uh, rear suspension. This is a spring damper, uh, unlike the air suspension that you see in the mid-drive version of the Aries. So this one's not quite as high end. It's set for 2,000 pounds. You can do some adjustment. It's not quite as adjustable as the air suspension. Uh, but John, can you kind of show me a little bit about adjusting this one? Sure, absolutely. So you can tighten or loosen the spring by putting both hands on the canister and just moving it like this to tighten or loosen. Uh, and that way, uh, as you mentioned, it's not as tunable as the air shock. It's set for a little bit higher pressure. We assume most riders are, uh, that fit on the bike tend to be a little bit bigger. So uh, we've sized it for them, but you can actually loosen it up a bit to get a little more cush. Okay, cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the electric system. Uh, so you have a 48 volt, 11.6 amp hour battery uh, that actually fits into the down tube here. Uh, and there is a key to get that on and off. Let's go ahead and show you that process uh, real quick. Uh, thank you very much, John. So it actually does come out from the side, which is really nice. That's a, a nice way to get it on there secure without having to pull it straight up. They actually affords you more space to work with if they wanted to put the, the rear shock in here so you don't have to use that space to get the battery in with the side mount. So it's pretty cool. Um, it also has like the terminals in here that are nice and easy to get to. Um, and also the key uh, for locking that I kind of mentioned it does have a spring in there. And these are specific keys, uh, by the way. Um, so if you had two e velos for some reason, you'd have two sets of keys. Um, and yeah, the, the controller is located in here as well. So oh yeah. That as well, is... That's a good point. So the controller actually resides inside of this spot in the frame. So it's very well protected uh, inside of here. And that's a 20 amp controller that's hidden inside of that spot. Uh, it's pretty cool because like I said, it's protected, but it also keeps the weight central in the middle. You don't have something hanging off down here that's kind of obstructing, you know, clearance if for some reason you wanted to take some off-road stuff or go on a curb or so. So that's really cool. Um, that battery, by the way, is using Samsung cells, which are generally used for longer duration uh, when you're out on a ride. It's kind of what they're made for. Or, and the motor in the back, I did mention a little bit, uh, is a pretty wide motor. So this motor is occupying 175 millimeters worth of width for the rear dropout. This is a 750 watt motor that puts out 1000 watts peak. So this is definitely not uh, not a slug. Uh, it's a really strong motor and I was actually able to use it on the hills coming up here that I briefly mentioned that we were going up a really steep hill. I was able to just sit down and put on the throttle and then off it went. So that's a really nice motor to have for this sort of setup because I mean the bike does weigh more. This bike weighs in excess of 60 pounds fully loaded um, with the battery and everything. So because of that, you need a strong motor to carry that, but also it's going to be a bike that's meant for more general purpose and stronger hills. So I think they had a good choice there uh, with that motor setup. 
Uh, so coming up to the controls, uh, we kind of talked about this a little bit, um, but up on the front you have a throttle um, that's like a thumb throttle that will expressly engage the motor no matter what pedal assist you're in. Pedal assist is controlled by pressing the plus or minus button and it's all shown right here on this pretty clear display. Right now the sun is shining so hopefully the glare isn't too bad, but on the display it does have an automotive motif that shows you how fast you're going both in number and also this graph that will increase as you're going faster. Um, it also has a variable display on the bottom that cycles through uh, with the press of the information button from trip, odometer, max speed, average speed, range, calories, uh, and also a timer on there. Also shows you the battery percent up on the top right. So that's that's the, the display in general, but there's also another really cool feature um, in which it has, kind of, uh, how did you describe it? I think you said a latent... Um, yeah, it is an ambient light a sensor. Ambient light sensor, that's right. So an ambient light sensor in which there's a sensor right here on the display itself that measures how much light outside. And when it gets too dark, then both the headlight and the tail light will come on automatically. You can control that if you want by just pressing the light button and then you can turn it on if for some reason, you know, the light sensor might not kick in at that part of dusk or so. Um, it also has brake lights, I learned, on the right here. That when you squeeze on the handles for uh, the brakes, it will illuminate the the light in the back, uh, which is pretty nice. You, hopefully you can see that through the broad daylight. I was able to see it on the road. I got um, just riding around here, but it's anyone's guess as to what the camera will pick up sometimes. <laughs> so yeah, that is the, the motor, the battery, the display, uh, all the electrical controls, all the mechanical specs. So let's go ahead and jump on the bike and take them for a ride. Okay, so we're going through the, the neighborhoods here, and uh, I, I would say that um, between this and the hub drive, or sorry, the hub drive and the mid drive, this is the hub that I'm on right now. Um, between this and the mid drive, I would say that I feel like the, I would say that the, from, the, from the way it rides, the mechanical aspect seems to be what stands out to me the most. Electrically, this bike has a lot of power. Uh, same with the mid-drive. And the placement of the motor, whether it's in the back or whether it's in the middle, it does contribute to balance, I would say. Um, but this bike is kind of made for more kind of like uh, cruising, you know, not so um, technical kind of riding. And so that particular benefit of a mid-drive is not as pronounced between the two bikes. Uh, however, the mechanical side is very clear. Uh, the brakes on this bike don't bike quite as quickly, um, so you kind of got to brake a little bit ahead of time. You know, kind of plan out, keep your eye on the road, uh, stay ahead of the game a little bit in that way. Um, the, the shifter also is another point where uh, that's a really cool thing about the, uh, the mid-drive is the shifter on that one. Definitely check out the review for that. The shifter on this one I'd say is, um, I don't know, the grip shift. Uh, it's really easy to access, but it's not quite as quick, you know, you got to kind of turn your hand a little bit more in order to get that going. So, you know, it's, it's not quite as nice, not quite as high end, but you know, Evelo has the option. So this is definitely a, an awesome bike for, you know, for the price of what you're getting. Um, it has a lot of great things about it. The same battery pack. Like I said, the motor kind of has the same purpose, um, as the mid drive. Um, so I wouldn't be too... I wouldn't let the placement of the motor be too much of a thing. The tires, the wheels, I mean, those feel super good. They're really uh, stable. They have some good maneuverability, especially for their size. So I would, that's the same between the two bikes. So if you're considering the two, um, that's one thing to, to kind of check off is that they have the same, same feeling in that regard. So let me go ahead and show you the front of the bike and I'll kind of tell you a little bit about that shifter that I had mentioned. So, um, instead of just clicking a little trigger shifter um, that would be down here um, by my fingers, you got to turn your, your palm or your hand in there to shift gears mechanically. So it's, it is kind of tight. It does shift a little bit quicker um, than say um, a lot like the levers, but you know, I definitely like the uh, Enviolo. That, that's a nice setup there. Um, the, the brakes, like I said, you do got to kind of brake a little bit early because uh, these brakes don't bite quite as hard as the hydraulic. So yeah, something to keep in mind. 
All right, guys, so we are on the Evelo Aries, and I've got you pointed down at the bottom bracket. This is the hub drive version. So I've got it cranked up to pedal assist level five, and this, of course, is a cadence-based assist. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump up the hill and show you what it does. This is gonna be at more or less full, uh, full power, because not only are we gonna be going um, at full power on the pedal assist, but we're also gonna be doing max load going up the steep hill. So let's go ahead and see what it does. Okay, so we went up that pretty steep hill. That's probably the steepest one that I've seen in the area so far. It's so steep that the sidewalk kind of had like these little ridges uh, built into it. I guess that's to prevent people from rolling down the hill as they're walking. I don't know, <laughs> but the bike did great. I was able to scale it down into the lowest mechanical gear and cranked it up to the highest electrical assist. And at that rate, I'm you know using the pedal still to contribute, but it wasn't all that much tension. I was able to just glide up the hill with the power of that motor. So great stuff. All right, guys, thanks for checking out the review of the eVelo Aries hub drive. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, John and I were actually talking about the percentage of grade on this hill behind us uh, that the bike was able to power up. And John, you were saying it's about 20... Correct, about yeah. 20 or 22%. 20, 22%. So it can do that. I can tell you with confidence. <laughs> so if you want to check out the full review for this bike, you can go to electricbikereview.com. There we have all the specifications and measurements. You can compare this with other eVelo bikes that we've been able, able to review, uh, along with a lot of other ones that are out there in the great wide open. So you can also go to the website if you want to participate in the forums and ask a question or hang out in the community. So thanks for watching, guys. Ride safe.